Hello, All Saints. Hope you're doing well. Coming to you from our home on Thursday evening. Just wanted to give an update on some of the things happening. The past few months have been remarkable, haven't they? The Lord is visiting us, and I'm having to consult my notes because there's several things here. I'm getting reports from across the church. So are you. So are many of our staff leaders. Um, people are coming to faith in Christ. We're having baptisms. We have baptisms at youth camp. We've got people confessing sin, repenting, and running to the Lord. We've got people going through deliverance, as we shared recently, people being set free from sin, hidden bondage, pain, and sickness. People being drawn into community, the life of the church. And really, this is the stuff that we have prayed for and fasted for and longed for, and God is doing it. So we don't want to just read the Bible, do we? We want to actually live the Bible and see the truths of what's written in the scriptures become reality in our daily lives, and it's happening. So what we're seeing in the book is actualizing um, among us at All Saints and in other churches for that matter, and we're going to continue to look to the scriptures and pray that God will help us obey them and experience, experience them. So we're going to continue to work diligently as we talk about it at All Saints. We're farmers. Paul talks about that in Timothy. And so we're going to be farming and irrigating while the rain is falling on us. And we're going to be pressing into uh, the community that we are, a community of worship and formation and mission uh, with the Lord Jesus. And we're going to be, while all this is happening, we're going to be devoted to the main and the plain of the scriptures and of creedal Christianity and that involves lots of things, but really it's boiled down to the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. Uh, at All Saints, with all of these wonderful things going on, we're going to keep our eye on the Lord Jesus, on what the book says, and it boils it down to love for God, love for people, and making disciples. And so we're going to press into that uh, with new vigor. Um, a further thing. I wanted to introduce a helpful tool for discerning spiritual activity. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, and I planned on doing it last Sunday, but I ended up in the hospital. Um, we pulled into the church parking lot on Sunday morning, and we got a call from a friend, uh, and he had been struck by a car going 45 miles an hour. He was on his bike. The Lord spared him. And so we went straight to the hospital and praise the Lord, he's, he's doing well. But I was grateful um, to reach out to Esther and have her bring the word at a moment's notice. And it was wonderful. I've heard from many, many people. And then we, I, I got to be there for a little bit of the All Church lunch and it was fantastic. Um, seeing lots of new faces being welcomed by you, people that have been there for some time and lots of new folks uh, being brought into All Saints Community Church. It's wonderful. So I wanna talk about this tool. Um, it's a tool that's a lens through which we can view spiritual activity, things that the Lord is doing around us and we wanna have discernment. And so like Bean uh, that we use for prophecy, a lens through which we view and discern prophecy, B-E-A-N. This one is another acronym. So bear with me. It's just a memorable way. It's B-C-O-P. And um, it's based on 1 John 4, 1 through 16. So you can read that later. 1 John 4, 1 through 16. And this uh, tool for discerning spiritual activity. I'm going to just read the first few verses here. 1 John 4, the apostle John says this. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse 2 says this, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. So, 
the Apostle John goes on to give the first century church a tool in these 16 verses by which to discern and judge and examine the spiritual activity around them. What's interesting is Jonathan Edwards, who was a well-known American theologian. He lived from 1730, actually 1703 to 1758. And he was a leading figure in the First Great Awakening, which swept across continental Europe and England and Wales and Scotland and came into the 13 colonies from 1730 to 1755. The point is though, Jonathan Edwards, a man of the book, was seeing great revival, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was shaking the Western world. And he was searching the scriptures for ways to view and discern and understand what was the true activity of God and what was not the work of the Lord, what I call hamburger helper, maybe even the work of the enemy trying to confuse and disunify. And he came to this text, first John one, first John four, one to 16. And so there are many things you could say from this passage. And Jonathan Edwards has really about six or seven things, but I've boiled it down to four. And so when we're looking at spiritual activity around us, we're going to be asking four things. The first is B, is it biblical, right? Is it aligned with the teachings of scripture? Do we find it in the Old Testament, the New Testament first? Secondly, is it Christ exalting? Does it reinforce the reality that Jesus Christ is Lord and to him goes all the glory, all the credit? Is it Christ exalting? Thirdly, does what we're seeing oppose darkness? And so the Apostle John says in 1 John 3, 8, that Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. And then he says in chapter 4, greater is he who is in you, church, than he who is in the world. And so as we discern spiritual activity, we're saying, is this destroying the works of the devil? Is this destroying sin? demonic activity, sickness, disease. And then lastly, P, does it produce Holy Spirit fruit, um, especially love? So you can go back and look at 1 John 4, 1 to 16, B, C, O, P. And so we're going to be using that as a tool. There's many more things that we could use and draw from the scriptures, but that's just a helpful tool, a template, a model that we can use. Okay, lastly here, um, I already mentioned this, but we're going to have ongoing training in the biblical practice of Holy Spirit ministry. Uh, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 4.12 that uh, the leaders in the church, um, those who are called, are called to equip the saints for ministry. So with all of this going on, you're going to hear me you're going to hear our other leaders, our pastors, our elders, everyone saying, are we equipping the saints? Are we raising up young leaders? Are we raising up the saints to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit in a biblically responsible way? That's the end result of this. We want the fruit of the Holy Spirit and we want the saints equipped. So on that note, um, September 10th and 17th, We've got Prophecy 1 and 2. These are two workshops, and basically they'll be focusing on the foundations of the New Testament gift of prophecy, and then they'll be very interactive. Um, there'll be lots of Q&A, lots of equipping, and some might ask, well, why prophecy? We're going to be looking at all the gifts in the coming seasons, but prophecy, as we say, calls out the other gifts. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 that we desire all the gifts. We honor all of them. They're all interlocked, but especially that we may prophesy. Uh, we're a prophetic church. The people of God are filled with the spirit of prophecy and prophecy enables us to look at others and call out the gifts of God that are in them. Um, another thing, Esther mentioned it last week. You're seeing it online. It's in the weekly email. Groups are underway right now. And so over the next several days, 
uh, information is going out, uh, group leaders are uh, getting their information out. And I just encourage you, get in a group. We're all super busy all the time, but there's lots of opportunities, lots of days of the week, uh, lots of time slots, uh, even stuff before church on Sunday mornings where you can connect with each other, make new friends, deepen relationships, deepen your relationship with God, study the scriptures, grow in spiritual practices. Some groups are committed to outreach. Uh, so lots of opportunities. Lastly here, this Sunday, Caleb McCain is going to be preaching and he is a faithful servant of Jesus in our church. Uh, many of you know him. He's a counselor. Um, he touches many lives, uh, relationships, marriages, families. And so we're grateful. I want to see us have um, uh, deep ranks. I want us to have soldiers who can preach and teach men and women in our church. And it's awesome to have uh, a preaching team and Caleb stepping into that. Um, I end with this oftentimes. Let's continue on a daily basis to read the scriptures, to pray, to sit at the Lord's feet. We have the amazing privilege and opportunity to be with the Lord as much as we want. And it's just astounding that he'll speak to us through his word. He'll guide us through the day, through his spirit. And so we want to be committed to Acts 2.42, uh, to individually and collectively, to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Man, I sure am thankful for you, thankful for all saints, and I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing among us. I know you are, and we just can't wait to be together during the week and on Sundays. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, saints, and we'll see you Sunday.